Hello and welcome to this session. This is Professor Farhat. In this session, we would look at gift tax simulations. Gift tax is a topic that I covered in the prior session. Now we're going to look at exercises. Hold on a second. Didn't you just set simulations and now you're saying exercises? Well, let me tell you something. Tax simulations, it's they're exactly as exercises. And I'm going to explain how when I go over the exercise. So make sure to remember when you're working exercises in college, you are preparing for your CPA actual simulation. This topic is covered in the corporate income tax course, the CPA exam regulation section, as well as the enrolled agent exam. As always, I would like to remind you to connect with me on LinkedIn if you haven't done so. YouTube is where you would need to subscribe. I have 1,600 plus accounting, auditing, tax, and finance lectures. This is a list of all the courses that I cover. If you like my lectures, please like them. Click on the like button. It doesn't cost you anything. Share them. Put them in playlist. And please connect with me on Instagram. On my website, you'll have access to additional resources, such as through false multiple choice, additional exercises, um, quasi CPA simulations. And if you're studying for your CPA exam, 2000 plus CPA questions. So let's take a look at the first question or the first simulation and let me tell you how, how am I going to take this and turn it into a simulation okay during the year uh, Rajiv makes the following transfer and the question is which of these transfer are subject to the federal income tax now here they gave you a statement 1000 to his employer re-election campaign so on the exam they could give you this information and they can tell you whether it's yes or no and the amount so this is one way they can ask you the question Okay, or rather than giving you the statement 1000 to his mayor re-election campaign, they can show you a canceled check. They can show you an exhibit with a canceled check of $1,000 pay payable to the mayor and in the memo re-election re campaign. So that's an exhibit. And you'll be like, whoa, exhibits are difficult. Well, not really. They're giving you the same information in a different format. So they can ask you the question in more than one way. So let's go back to the question itself. Well, is this subject to the gift tax? And the answer is no. Remember that political contribution, if you are contributing to the mayor's re-election, that's not subject to the gift tax. Let's look at number two. 21,000 to his aunt Ava to reimburse her what she paid for the hospital for the gall gallbladder operation. Now, they can give you a statement like this or they can give you a hospital bill with the amount of 21,000 really scary looking hospital bill and they can show you a check that you pay to Aunt Ava. The question here regardless is, is this subject to the gift tax? And the answer is yes. And you make, hold on a second. Wasn't this for a medical purpose? Why is it taxable? The reason is this, because what Rajav did, he paid his aunt directly. So if he paid his aunt directly, he paid her 21 he has he can exclude eight and uh, 15,000 for the annual exclusion and what's left subject to the gift tax is 6,000 he's gonna have to add this amount to his total gift tax for his lifetime let's look at the third option 18,000 paid directly to the surgeon who performed the operation now there's a difference between the second scenario and the third scenario and here what they could also give you I don't want to keep beating a, uh, a, uh, a dead horse, they could give you, for example, email, um, him emailing the surgeon, telling the surgeon, I'll pay you directly, don't worry, don't bill my aunt, or they could just give you the statement, okay? Or they can give you a phone conversation between the surgeon and uh, Rajiv, say, don't worry, make, do the operation, I will cover my aunt. Now, for this 18,000, this is different than this 21,000. Why? Here, Eva is not getting the cash. The cash is going directly to the doctor, to the medical operation. Under those circumstances, that's not, that's excluded from the gift tax. That's excluded. Therefore, he doesn't have to add the amount to the to his gift of uh, lifetime gift tax. 22000 to purchase a used car for his son to use at college. Now, this is, we don't have enough information, so we're going to make two assumptions and... Um, We'll take it from there to answer the question. Um, 22000 to purchase a car for his son. Generally speaking, that's a gift and it exceeds uh, it exceeds 15000 Or if this is part of child support obligation by the state law, then it's not. So if this 21000 is considered child support under the state law, then it's not a gift. 
but here we're not told anything so if it's a generally just 22,000 then yes that's a gift therefore you know again of the 22,000 assuming that's the only gift he gave to his son this year he can exclude 15 and what's left is seven now remember this 15 could change every year due to inflation Congress readjustment so on and so forth okay let's take a look at this simulation in 2013 again just gonna go back here I don't want to keep beating a dead horse but rather than giving you this information I can give you the closing uh, an exhibit with the closing cost for the car and maybe an email between the son and the father I like to buy this car well son you know I can only you know pay up to 22,000 well buy this car for me and yeah you know, so it's 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 like it's an email or a phone call between the son and the father but the point is you paid a car for you pay $22,000 for the car okay so in the simulation they try to make it look intimidating but as long as you know the concepts you'll be able to tackle it tackle it in 2013 and with 200,000 Alice purchase a certificate of deposit an investment at the bank listing title follow a lease payable on proof of death to Clark so once a lease dies and somebody could show the proof the money goes to Clark Elise dies in 2020 and Clark which is the nephew redeems the CD now which is worth 205 disregarding the annual exclusion what's Elise's gift in to Clark in 2013 let's start with 2013 when Elise gave the gift well in quote a gift really was this a gift and the answer is no okay why because the nephew did not have access to the did not have access immediately it's not present gift it's not present gift therefore it's not a gift therefore in 2013 there's no gift because no there's no present interest that uh, uh, Clark can can use the money they can't use the money so that's out 2020 is this a gift and you're gonna say yes and the answer is no so why well here's why the transfer by death is not a gift the transfer by by death is an estate tax is subject to the estate tax which is something we did not talk about we're gonna talk about in the next session so when Elisa's die and the money goes to Clark it's after her death it's no longer part of the gift tax since after death we talked about that that gift after death it's an estate tax when, when somebody gets a gift after tax so just kind of planting the seed for the next recording right about the estate tax good let's take a look at this question Christian wants to transfer as much as possible to his four adult married children including spouses which is it means eight and eight minor grandchildren so we have eight minor grandchildren without using any unified transfer tax credit now what do we mean without using the unified the transfer tax credit it means give them up to a point where you don't have to report anything it doesn't add to your gifts well the amount for 2019 that we are dealing with is 15,000 okay guess what if it's 15,000 and we have four kids and, and and four adults with their spouses that's four plus four eight and eight great grandchildren that's we're gonna take this amount multiplied by 16 what does that mean it means Christian can contribute up to 240,000 no questions asked nobody will qu will question Christian doesn't have to report it doesn't have to do anything why because for each individual they gave 15,000 that's it now the second question what if Christian his wife Mia joins the gift what if joins the gift we can double it And this is the power of gift splitting okay we're both given the gift so we can double it so they could give together almost half a million no questions asked they don't have to report it they don't have to pay taxes they don't have to do anything about it let's take a look at this question Noah and Sophia want to make a maximum contribution to their state qualified tuition program on behalf of their minor granddaughter Amanda without exceeding the act the annual federal tax exclusion Okay. what's the annual federal tax exclusion without getting the unified tax credit involved again for our purposes is 15 now you could be viewing this lecture in 2022 2023 and this 15,000 could be 17 could be 18 I don't know if the inflation kicks in could be 20 you know who knows okay if the president is re-elected could be anything all right or not re-elected could be anything but the point is we're using 15 because that was the effect the limit the annual exclusion in effect when I'm doing this recording so this is the 
annual federal tax exclusion. But what we have to be aware of here is this is a 529 plan. For the 529 plan, the government allows you what's called the front loading. It's not, there is no terms front loading. I'm just making it up. Front loading means you can put five year up front. This way your money grows up front without, 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 uh, without being, uh, without being uh, subject to any gift tax. Okay. So, so what, what does that mean? It means if Noah and Sophia, they want to do so, there are two individuals. Okay, so there are two individuals, so we're talking about $30,000, and we could upload five years, so they can contribute up to 150000 okay, today, without incurring any federal gift tax. They don't have to worry about this, but after they do so, they have to wait five years until they can give Amanda any money, so they can use it up, up they can use it up front, they can as I said, front loaded. I'm not sure if the word front loaded is the correct word, but you guys get my point. They allow you to take it, make it now. Why not? So, so this money will grow early. So the earlier you invest, the more, um, the time value of money, the more you will have in five or 10 or 15 years. They don't tell us how old is Amanda when she's, when she's ready to go to college, but that's the point. Okay. Now in the next session, we're going to look at a related topic. And that's gift after death or estate tax. It's not gift after tax. Basically, estate tax is after the individual passes away. Now, always I would like to remind you to please like my lectures, share them. And if you're studying for your CPA exam, check out my website. It doesn't cost you anything to check it out. Look at it. Remember, if you're studying for your CPA, you're making an investment of 20 to 30 years, invest properly. And I know this topic, um, it's not properly taught in most colleges sometimes it's not taught at all so um, here we go i'm trying to help out good luck and study hard